Hello and welcome again. How should we define the future of media literacy and in theory and its application? Uh, we are gonna uh, talk with Dr. Alice Lee today. Uh, today. Uh, Hello. And she's gonna help us uh, decode that question. Um, uh, Alice is a professor of the Department of Media uh, or Interactive Media at the Hong Kong Baptist University. She joins us from Hong Kong today. For 20 years, she has studied and taught media literacy in Hong Kong. Um, she's co-edited books. She's a prolific researcher. Um, you can find a number of articles that she's written in research on media literacy itself. So she's really steeped in media literacy. Um, she's also on editorial boards of prestigious journals. Um, she's a member in, in various media literacy related initiatives by uh, UNESCO, Hong Kong Education Bureau and IC4ML and, and others. She holds a PhD uh, from the University of British Columbia in Canada. Welcome, Alice, to Hello. IC4ML's yeah. conversation series. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um, like, like I was saying, you know, if we can jump right in to the question uh, that uh, is going to intrigue all of us, and you have kindly offered to answer, how should we define the future of media literacy in its theory and application? Alice, please take it away from here. Okay, uh, before we discuss theory, maybe, you know, we did try to uh, define, you know, uh, the future role of media literacy. And uh, regarding the future of media literacy, we can see that media literacy, you know, will certainly be an essential life skill, you know, in the coming smart cities. You know, media literacy is important, you know, for cultivating wise, you know, media information uh, users and um, competent knowledge workers, and as well as, you know, informed citizens. And I remember, you know, one of the UNESCO representatives said, you know, in the past, uh, it seems that media, media and information literacy is, um, uh, seems to be optional or a luxury. Uh, so, but now in the future, it is a necessity. So, and we are moving into a very different world, highly technologically mm. advanced world, you know. So, and I think AI literacy will be a big part of media literacy. So, and the media information literacy environment will have a new phase. So that's why it is necessary for media uh, literacy uh, practitioners to uh, relearn the media logic, uh, redevelop the curr curriculum, and also redesign the pedagogy. And the implication is that we need more media studies and uh, theory building, you know, to launch the new paradigm of media literacy education, hmm. you know, in the coming years. And uh, in the past decade, you know, we can see that, you know, uh, media, uh, our field of uh, media literacy has increasingly, has become increasingly uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, it is because our field has significant social, political, and cultural impacts, and it has attracted uh, increased scholarly attention from many other fields. So we can see, you know, we have very close relationship, you know, with other fields such as education, mm -hmm. journalism, and cultural study, information science, and even, you know, for business, religion, and political science. Sure. And so the scope of media literacy is expanding. So in recent years, we can see our, our media literacy researchers are actively reach out to many other fields, you know, to uh, get theoretical inputs, you know, mm -hmm. to conduct their research and uh, uh, carry out their media uh, practices. Uh, so, uh, you know, many people think uh, theory uh, are too abstract and uh, it seems that they're not down to earth. So maybe it is not very useful. And um, very often, you know, people think uh, it is very important to acquire skills. Right. To learn how to do something, you know, to do practice. You know? And yes, skills are very important. And media literacy skills are very, very important. But theories are also useful. Yeah, because there are at least three functions of theories. Okay. 
to explain, to predict, and to uh, control or you know form an action or plan. Uh, so, uh, well, so in the context of media right. education, uh, theories can help us to explain, you know, why a media uh, event occur as it did, or how fake news spreads. And then right. for, you know, and also theories can help us to predict, you know, if uh, young people, you know, uh, suffers from cyberbullying, and then he may he may have, you know, uh, the mental health problems. Mm -hmm. And also media is the intervention model, you know, can lead people, you know, to uh, uh, self-regulate and use the digital media uh, 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 better. So therefore it is good for students, you know, to, to learn uh, media literacy theory so that they can, you know, understand different uh, media phenomenon, right. enhance their media knowledge, and then yeah function better in the digital age. And then for uh, media literacy teachers, they, I think theory can help them to mm -hmm. formulate better learning and teaching strategies. For media literacy researchers, you know, theories can assist them to, uh, assist them in, you know, uh, critically reflecting on media literacy policies mm -hmm. and educational practices. Right. So theory can inform practice and improve practice. So that's why I think we should, you know, learn practice, learn theories, try to apply theory to our work and also, right. to, you know, to build original media literacy, you know, uh, theories, you know, right. in our field. Yeah. So, uh, and, sorry. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, uh, and in my opinion, when, when we're looking into the future, so I'm particularly interested in, in four academic fields, you know. Mm -hmm. I think their theoretical inputs can, you know, will have the greatest contributions, you know, to our field of media literacy. And this field, these four fields are communication, education, psychology, and technology. Now, first, first of all, let's take a look at communication because we are going to uh, live in a uh, you know, media world. And so communication theories, you know, uh, can inform the media research and practice. And for example, uh, medium theories. Medium theories, you know, may explain how the future metaverse environment will be different, you know, from the current right. digital media, you know, environment. Yeah. So let me interject there, Alice. So, so hmm. far you've been talking about why theory is important for students to learn um, you know, just media literacy students to learn and why teachers should emphasize the teaching or the pedagogy of theory itself. Like all these theories, it could be the medium theory, it could be various other theories that even media studies have derived from psychology and the other fields, right? Like, you know, media studies themselves grew like that as an interdisciplinary project. Um, then my question would then be, uh, is media um, literacy in theoretical terms, is it developed enough? Or are you still looking at theories that are already existing in various fields, like the ones that you just mentioned? Is there a need then for, uh, for example, researchers to probe more into media literacy as a field, just as media studies became a field as an interdisciplinary project? Yes. I think when we look, I think the field of media literacy has been developed for at least 40 years. Right. So, and we have a lot of great, you know, pioneers, you know. And uh, when we when we um, review, you know, what we have done, you know, in the past. And I, I think, you know, we have a lot of great, you know, uh, frameworks. Mm -hmm. So media literacy frameworks, media literacy models, those are focused on teaching our young people or the citizen how to become media literate, and then how to uh, 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 serve as uh, 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 informed you know, citizen right. you know, in our society, yes. And for, I think that is great. You know, that, you know, I think in the coming years, you know, we are, we are moving into a very different world. So, and 
uh, so that's why I think we have to uh, develop, you know, new theories, you know, new, right. you know, concepts to handle, yeah. you know. I, I always say, you know, in the old days, you know, uh, media literacy handled with mass media, right? Yeah, right. so newspaper, you know, and uh, television, you know, so I call it media education 1.0. Right. And then we are moving into the internet world. And then we have to handle social media, you know, the digital media, and then I'll call it, you know, that is a media literacy, you know, 2.0. 2.0. We are, we are now moving into the AI era. Mm -hmm. So so that's why. And I think it's just different because we are going to have maybe in just 10 years or 10, uh, 20 yeah. years, we are mm -hmm. going to handle with the human metaverse mm. so we are the world is moving from a 2d world to a 3d world mm. and we have to handle you know with the virtual you know reality right so we have the real sound and also we have the virtual sound and That's also right. we have and also we have to handle with machines, you know, because that is the AI era, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I think it, we are moving into the web uh, media education 3.0 or 4.0. Right. So that, that is the thing we have to handle. And so, so that's why we have to get theoretical input from many other so, fields, mm -hmm. you know, to, to inform us, you know, to yeah. do better. It's interesting what you're saying because it sounds almost as if you're saying that as human beings, we are poised to change our functions as a result of what technology is producing, um, what humans used to produce before. And so we need to maneuver what our functionality is in this metaverse enabled media world is going to be. Right. Yes, and and yes. on on that note, I think we've come to the end of this interview. This is the part I hate the most because I wish this could go on for a little while because we, <laughs> you know, you you raise some very interesting things. But the nature of this uh, video, you know, the whole video generation uh, is also knocking on the doors of the metaverse generation where attention is not the biggest strength of our of this generation right so what we try to do is to cap encapsulate these thoughts and then kind of trigger some uh, intellectual thought uh, which i'm sure you have alice so for that um, thank you very much for for uh, taking the time thank you very much <laughs>